Welcome to Arlington's historic town hall, a fitting setting for Governor Healy and her administration to announce historic investments in housing, economic development, infrastructure, and climate resiliency programs. It is my honor on behalf of Arlington to welcome here today Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities, Ed Augustus, Secretary of the Executive Office for Administration and Finance, Matt Gorkowitz, and CEO of the Citizens Housing and Planning Association, Rachel Heller. Thank you. So I am honored to say just how seriously Arlington takes the role it has to play in addressing local and regional issues, especially the well-documented housing crisis and we have sought productive ways to attract and retain residents and workers. In 2021, in this building behind me, Arlington's deliberative town meeting sought additional tools to address this crisis through pursuing a real estate transfer fee and permitting accessory dwelling units by right. Yet further, last fall, we pursued early compliance with the MBTA Communities Act, creating overlay districts allowing multifamily housing by right. Thank you. And we are especially proud to have recently had our economic feasibility analysis approved, introducing greater and deeper affordability provisions within our MBTA communities districts. Arlington is poised to continue to partner with the administration in tackling head-on these challenges we face as a commonwealth. And it is my privilege to introduce you to you, Governor Mara Healy. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, Jim. And it is great to be in Arlington and great to be joined by uh, everyone who's here today. We're here to announce Massachusetts Capital Investment Plan for fiscal year 25 through 29, which sets out historic investments for people in our communities. The, the capital plan is critically important because it's how we invest in long-term success. We're able to invest confidently because careful fiscal management has secured us a strong bond rating and access to capital. It's especially valuable now given some of the big challenges that we face around housing, affordability, climate, transportation, and infrastructure. This plan will advance the work that we're doing on all those fronts and advance our overarching goal of making Massachusetts more affordable, more competitive, and more equitable for all. You'll hear, you'll hear shortly from our Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities, Ed Augustus. He'll speak about the fact that we've left nothing on the field when it comes to investments in housing. This is something that really has been all encompassing, most recently seen by the filing of our Affordable Homes Act with a record level of capital funding for housing. The plan is also a 30% increase over last year in bringing the capital investment for housing to nearly $400 million. We know what that's gonna mean in terms of our ability to produce, preserve, modernize, and improve housing units around the state. The plan also creates a new incentive for local housing solutions. Secretary Augustus and his team have already launched an extensive campaign to help our cities and towns come into compliance with the MBTA Communities Act. More than, more than 70 communities have already approved zoning under the MBTA Communities Act in compliance. And 85%, 85%, the vast majority of communities have already held a vote and have, has, have had successfully adopted the MBTA Communities Act. So we're looking forward to partnering more with communities across the state. And today, as part of that effort, we are creating for the first time ever, the MBTA Communities Catalyst Fund. This is a fund that will provide funding over the next three years to further support communities like Arlington, who are in full compliance with the MBTA Communities Act. So we're rewarding communities that are focused on housing 
and focused on helping us get to where we need to be as a state, which is to produce and generate more housing units all over. So the Healy Driscoll administration is partnering with community, showing up with real dollars and real ways to continue to support that effort. This plan takes a similarly bold initiative and approach to all of our challenges. And when I talk about taking initiative and bringing boldness and pragmatic solutions, thoughtfulness to all the challenges we face, we are so lucky in this state to have Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll um, as an incredible partner, in not just in this administration, but really to everybody across the state and especially to our communities and local leaders. So I want to welcome Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll. Thank you, Governor. Very much appreciated. It's great to be with everyone on this beautiful afternoon. We've got a great cross-section of individuals who have helped us, not only with developing of this capital plan from staff, but people who know what these investment dollars mean from the private sector, from our public housing friends, our policy leaders. Knowing that all of you are part of this effort is really what Team Massachusetts is about, and frankly, it's how we do things in Massachusetts. And as the Governor said, this five-year capital plan is about investing in communities. Great, great cities don't happen by accident, it takes investment. And we're gonna be making those investments with equity, with collaboration, and with innovation. And as any local leader will tell you, strong cities and towns, they need infrastructure, particularly older historic small cities and towns like we have here in Massachusetts. So in addition to the housing investments that the governor laid out, this capital plan also invests $718 million in local infrastructure. When you wanna grow, you need the infrastructure to support it. Some of these are the bread and butter programs that our community leaders rely on. This plan funds 68 community grant programs, including things like MassWorks, Chapter 90, the new Housing Works program that we created last year to support and spur housing production. It also makes significant investments to help our communities withstand, recover from, and mitigate natural hazards, something that we're seeing happening more and more often. We've seen that floods and severe weather events are more common in this era of climate change. We want to make sure there's some tools and resources as a state to assist at the local level. It also continues our whole of government approach to meeting our climate goals by weaving decarbonization and energy efficiency throughout our capital investments. These are areas where the state can lead the way, both in what we're using and how we're deploying materials and equipment. The capital plan also supports the execution of our economic development plan. Team Massachusetts, leading future generations. I know you know what that is. It funds our progress in climate technology, robotics, AI, and more. And it supports the continued delivery of important major projects happening within various communities. The veterans homes in Holyoke and Chelsea, campuses from Bridgewater State University to Mass Maritime, trial courts in Quincy, Lowell, Framingham, and Springfield, and the Cape Cod bridges, bringing more state funds to bear as we continue to secure and pursue federal funding for these critical, critical projects. All of these projects happening in communities also bring with them jobs, spur economic opportunity, help support the overall ripple effects of the sort of community vibrancy we're hoping to create. In all, this capital plan delivers on our get stuff done approach to governing. It addresses some of our biggest challenges and it helps bring to life our state's collective vision for the future. It doesn't get cheaper to work on these things 10 years from now. We've got to make these investments now. We're committed to doing that. And we're grateful for everyone who had input in it and who helped put it together, particularly our team from ANF. I see a lot of you who we spent meetings with pouring through numbers and documents. We appreciate all that support. And it's now my pleasure to turn it over to the person who's really helping us on the housing front, ensuring we're not just thinking about policy, but how it actually works on the ground and empowering our local community leaders. Our Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities, Ed Augustus. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Governor Healy, thank you for these substantial housing investments. This level of funding highlights this administration's commitment to creating more homes and lowering the cost of housing across Massachusetts. Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, as a former municipal leader, you've seen firsthand how this funding can really impact our local communities. And I thank you for your consistent vigilance in addressing the housing crisis. And to Secretary Gorkowitz, thank you and your team for your continued partnership. I'm grateful uh, how closely we work on not only this project, but so many others. Housing improves people's lives. When seniors have stable housing on a fixed income, they can focus on taking care of their health and enjoying their lives. When kids have stable housing, they can focus on schoolwork. When we create more affordable housing for everyone, our communities are stronger. 
The capital investment plan will create stronger, more equitable, and affordable communities in Massachusetts. It's a historic commitment to our mission. Housing is the foundation. You can't build a home without a foundation, and you can't build a productive life without a stable home. We know this, which is why Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll are increasing capital investments in housing by 30%. As the governor said, this will allow us to produce or preserve more than 5,300 homes. And we now have two new tools to help us. As we continue to work with our partners in the legislature to pass the governor's historic Affordable Homes Act, we're working to jumpstart housing production now. The Affordable Homes Act includes the creation of a momentum fund to accelerate development of mixed income multifamily housing. It would authorize $50 million toward that fund. This capital improvement plan puts $10 million toward the Momentum Fund now, so we don't lose critical time implementing the new law when the Affordable Homes Act is passed. This allows us to turn the key on important projects that might not pencil out on their own. It allows us to start building sooner. At the same time, we need to make sure we can build housing where we need it most. The MBTA Communities Law, passed three years ago by an overwhelming bipartisan vote of the legislature, does exactly that. For half a century, we've built communities where the DPW worker, the barista, or your child's kindergarten teacher can't afford to live. Instead, we've been hoping that some other community will provide the housing they need. Well, that's not really fair. And these are people you want in your community. These are people who work in your community. And they should be able to call that community their home. As the governor said, today we are launching a pilot program called the MBTA Catalyst, Communities Catalyst Fund, seeding with $15 million a capital investment, which will reward the communities like Arlington, uh, that are in compliance with the MBTA community law. It will provide funds for infrastructure projects, planning for housing, housing development, and the acquisition of properties to develop housing units. This is another tool in communities' toolbox to jumpstart housing production in their newly adopted zoning districts. The capital improvement plan increases investment in other important programs to help speed housing production and preservation. This includes $57 million for the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, which will create more than 1,000 affordable units, primarily to middle-income households. That's a 33% increase from last year. <laughs> Included in the Housing Works, $108 million will continue to support the administration's groundbreaking efforts on the Housing Works infrastructure program created by the governor in last year's CIP. Part of this funding will provide uh, funding and incentive payments to municipalities who meet zoning best practices and fund local infrastructure, including in the Housing Works investment is funding for climate resilient affordable housing. And I'm extremely proud that all of the housing efforts we emphasize will emphasize resiliency, decarbonization, and environmental justice. In addition to building new housing, this administration has made a commitment to preserving and improving our public housing. Massachusetts has about 43,000 units of state-funded public housing, the biggest state-supported public housing system in the country, but it's been underfunded and neglected for far too long. The capital investment plan invests $157 million into our public housing. That's a 30% increase over last year. It's funding for much needed repairs and upgrades to our units in our 229 local housing authorities. Because this administration believes that everyone deserves to live in safe, healthy, and dignified homes. With with that, I want to turn it over to uh, my colleague, Secretary Matt Gorkwood, Secretary of Administration and Finance. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, Secretary Gustus, Administrator Feeney, and the Town of Arlington for hosting us, and everyone who came out today 
to hear about and support the administration's capital investment plan. I also want to thank my team, including Assistant Secretary Caitlin Connors and Capital Budget Director Timur uh, Yantar, uh, for all their work. This, has been, uh, this hasn't been an easy process to manage, but you did it very gracefully. Um, and I say it's never easy because, as all you know, the demand for resources across our state is great. The need for building upgrades uh, on our college campuses, repairing roads and bridges in our cities and towns, rehabilitating, uh, our, our, uh, modernizing our courts, uh, and decarbonization, the list is long. And despite that need, our capacity to borrow and spend is limited. That's why I'm proud that this fiscal year, 25 to 29, five-year capital plan strikes a balance, the right balance, between being affordable and fiscally prudent and making the types of exciting and necessary investments that will help us accomplish our goals of being more affordable, competitive, and equitable. The fiscal year 25 capital investment plan totals just over $3.1 billion and is growing by $212 million uh, over the traditional $125 million in growth we typically see. This was accomplished through our hard work with the Debt Affordability Committee to get some relief from the pressure of significant inflation and construction cost escalation that we've seen over the last recent years. Working with our partners in the Governor's Office and Secretariat's Office and Secretariat's across uh, throughout the Cabinet, we have allocated this growth to key priorities of this administration with the largest increase going to housing, economic development, climate and resiliency, and the preservation of state assets. As you've heard from the Governor and others, this plan alone uh, will dedicate $90 million in new capital uh, towards housing production, preservation, and bring in the two-year total increase that we've dedicated to housing to almost 52%, 52% in just two years. We'll also be making exciting new investments in areas like climate tech to ensure Massachusetts is competing and competitive, competing for jobs in the growth sector with potential generate, uh, generate strong economic returns that will benefit communities across the state. These investments are down payments on what we hope will be more to come as we work with the legislature to advance and finalize the Governor's Affordable Homes Act, Mass Leads Act, and the Future Tech Act. These bills set out ambitious spending goals for the coming years on housing, economic development, and IT, and we are committed to ramping up our investments over time to match the vision of those bills. We have also been working to expand the pie of available resources. We're also thrilled to see the legislature embrace, as part of its House two, our House 2 recommendations, a plan to put nearly $250 million of fair share money in the Commonwealth Transportation Fund, which will allow borrowing capacity up to $1.1 billion uh, over the next five years, um, including $300 million uh, for MBTA rail enhancement program. We also continue to support similar plan put forward in the budget to bond against fair share resources to support higher ed capital projects, something that we'll continue to advocate for and uh, hopefully see, uh, see get passed soon. And we're hopeful that we will um, see uh, a final reach uh, to the governor's desk, um, a, a bill that uh, takes interest from the stabilization fund and matches it for federal grant opportunities. We've already heard uh, great success bringing back federal grant dollars to Massachusetts, and this matching program uh, will only make us more competitive, uh, but free up space in our capital plan uh, to make more, in type, uh, more investments uh, on, in important projects like we've heard. So in addition to our investments, we have a multi-pronged strategy that allows us to bring more resources to the table uh, so that we can provide some relief to do some of these important prior, uh, priorities. So with that, I want to thank you all. And um, now I'll turn it over to uh, Rachel Heller from CHAPA. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, it is a true honor to be here today with the Healy Driscoll administration as they put another pillar in place to support the creation and preservation of the homes that Massachusetts needs. Housing is the single best investment we can make to put the Commonwealth on the path to a thriving future. Unfortunately, the high cost of housing is really holding us back and it's sending people packing and leaving our state. Between 2020 and 2022, the Commonwealth experienced the highest outmigration in 30 years as residents left for more affordable homes and a better quality of life. Today's announcement is about making it possible for people, for us, to stay here and for more people to move to our great state. This is vital to the health of our Commonwealth. Today's an announcement is an investment in people, in our communities, in our economy, and our future. We need 200,000 homes for people across income levels by 2030 to stabilize home prices and rents. When we invest in housing, people can stay in the communities they love. Renters can become homeowners, kids can live near their grandparents, our great restaurants have workers and customers, our seniors have, an option, have options to downsize, entrepreneurs can take a chance, 
and people can avoid homelessness. Today's announcement is yet another investment the Healy Driscoll administration is making in a bright future where everyone has the opportunity to live in a community that they can afford and the community that they choose. To make this vision a reality, we need a real partnership between communities and the state. The new MBTA Communities Catalyst Fund, in addition to Housing Works and Mass Works, gives our communities funding for the capital and infrastructure projects to support the growth that our communities and the Commonwealth need to thrive. This is huge. Chapel works across the state and we're working with the MBTA communities to implement the new multifamily zoning requirement. And we're hearing everywhere we go the need for support, the need to grow, the need to invest in infrastructure. And this administration is showing over and over that they're here to partner with our communities to grow while also preserving what it is that we love about our great and unique communities. Today's investment is about affordability. As we add 200,000 homes throughout the Commonwealth, we need to be intentional about affordability, ensuring that 60,000 of these 200,000 new homes are affordable for people with low, extremely low, and moderate incomes. And we must preserve the homes that we've got. The funding in this plan will support public housing, supportive housing, mixed income housing, accessible housing, and home ownership opportunities. This is the comprehensive approach we need for our people, our neighborhoods, our economy, and our future. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you to our uh, secretaries. We're happy to take any questions on topic. Okay, great. Well, thanks everybody for coming out. Appreciate it.